What is up YouTube? Let's talk about taking inspiration from nature. For those who may or may not know, I'm from South Africa, which is amongst other things well known for its incredible diversity in wildlife. And every time I go out into the wilderness, I get quite inspired by the sort of sounds that the birds are singing and the different sounds of nature itself. I thought it would be a great couple of videos to talk about the different ways of taking inspiration from nature and incorporating them into your music productions. So today we're looking at bird calls and we're not recreating them exactly, but we're taking inspiration from the rhythms and the sounds that these birds are creating to create our own unique sound effects and stuff that we can use in our tracks. Just kidding, that's called a hardy dar. We're not looking at that sound today. I thought I would just throw it in. A little inside joke for anyone who's watching this from Cape Town. I'm sure you know that sound. It's, I'm sure it's woken you up many, many times very early in the morning. Anyway, so I've recorded a bunch of uh, bird call sounds that I thought were quite interesting and, you know, that we could maybe look at and apply some of those sort of the techniques that the sort of birds are using in their melodies and the sort of uh, the rhythms that they're creating to create our own sort of unique psychedelic sounds. I didn't record these bird calls myself. I found them on various wildlife videos and websites and stuff like that. So there's a lot of noise in that one, but I'm sure you could kind of hear that the sound that that bird was creating. It's kind of like a sort of long sweep up and then a very quick kind of like LFO type of effect. We obviously can't recreate that like exact to the T but we can use that sort of uh, idea and that rhythm to create a sort of psychedelic effect that might fit the sort of tempo and the key of the track that we're working in. So let's add a new instance of Serum. So what we wanna do here is, let's just start with a sine wave. I think with most of these, we're gonna just use a sort of basic shape sine wave. Um, we can alter them a bit after the fact, but I think with this kind of video, we're going more for like getting inspiration from the sounds, you know, in terms of like the rhythms and the effects that they're creating, as opposed to trying to recreate the sounds exact to the T, like I said just now. So the sound is basically comprised of like two parts. There's the sort of first main sweep, and then the second kind of like LFO effect. We can create both of those types of effects using the same LFO but manipulating the speed of the LFO using another LFO. So what we can do is, let's just go to LFO one over here and we can actually go to this folder and choose sign. So here, what we wanna do is we wanna set trig on so that it starts at the beginning of the sign cycle over here every time that the note is triggered. Then what we wanna do is we wanna make this LFO modulate the course pitch over here. So we can just drag it. So what we wanna do is we wanna use this kind of initial ramp to create that kind of first sweep upwards in the pitch of the sound. Then we are going to speed up the LFO to create the second part of the sound. So initially I think that sort of the rate might be a little bit high, so we can turn it down to one over two. And now what we wanna do is we wanna create like two parts, like a sort of, um, like two separate triggers to the sound essentially, but we don't want to create two different like presets, so to speak. So we can use an LFO to modulate the level of one of the oscillators. So let's just drag that over like this. And now we can create something like this, where we've got like two plucks. So obviously it's a little bit fast and it also doesn't re-trigger when we uh, press the note. So let's click trig over here and maybe turn this down a little bit. Cool, not bad. So now let us create a third LFO that's going to modulate the speed of LFO one at this point where this kind of like re-triggers over here. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that LFO three and LFO two are set to the same bar setting over here, but to retain all the settings, it might just be easier to hold alt and drag LFO two to LFO three. That then duplicates it and it allows us to kind of just remove some of the points to get to the exact sound that we wanted rather than having to kind of like reconfigure that LFO. So now let's go to the matrix and set LFO three to modulate LFO one's speed. So 
So you might want to switch this setting over here so that it is unipolar. So here it, it might be getting a little bit sort of robotic at that quicker sort of LFO speed. So we can play with a smooth setting. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of like round off the points. And I believe as the LFO gets quicker, the rounding gets applied more and more. So it's not going to affect that initial ramp of the sound that we created. So there's not much fine tune in between that kind of like really fast and really slow LFO over there. So what we can do is we can enable triplets and dotteds. So that gives us a little bit more kind of like freedom to play with this uh, rate change in the modulation. You could even take BPM off entirely and play with the settings then to get like slightly more unique uh, sort of variations. So there's slight clicks at the beginning of the sound and to kind of like add a little bit more of a sort of natural effect to the sound, we want to round off these tips a little bit because obviously like the way that, you know, a bird sings is it uses kind of like it blows air. So it's not a kind of very sharp envelope on the sound, if that makes sense. Cool, that's sounding pretty awesome. So now we can slap some effects on there. We can, you know, get really creative with it. Reverbs, delays, all sorts of stuff like that. Remember, we're not recreating an exact bird sound here. We are going for a sort of unique psychedelic effect. So yeah, you know, go wild with it. Apply some sort of uh, techniques that I've showed in previous tutorials and stuff like that and come up with your own sort of uh, unique variations on the sound. Cool, that's sounding awesome so far. The next one I've prepared is kind of a little bit more of the random side of things. You know, I'd really enjoy my sort of random modulations and stuff like that. So I figured this would be appropriate to have a look at. Um, this is the sound. So kind of what I'm picking up from there is, you know, um, 
random speeds of this kind of like LFO shape that's changing to a sort of stepped kind of like sequence. I'm going to like go with that idea and run with it and see what we can come up with. So I'm going to open up a new instance of Serum, basic shapes, and let's go with the sine wave. So let's set up another LFO over here. And what we can do is again, just drag this over to the course. Let's go to the matrix and let's just set this to unipolar so that the sort of base frequency that the sort of modulation starts at is zero. And for now, let's just set it up so that it's like a very slight amount of sort of pitch that's uh, a sort of modulation that's happening. So I've even kind of used this output to kind of like divide it even more. So it's very, very subtle amount. We can come back and change it later, um, but this is what we're going to go with for now. So then here, let's go over to global and turn on both of these chaos oscillators to BPM sync, mono and sample and hold. Switch all of those on. And then let's set this to like a one over four on both sides. So the reason I'm setting up two and I'm clocking them to exactly the same settings is that so they're kind of like going to step together, but they're going to produce completely random sort of modulations. So let's go over to our matrix and let's just set one of these chaos oscillators to modulate the speed of LFO one. And we can play with this amount shortly. Let's just listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so we want the rate to be slightly faster. So let's set these to one over eight. Cool, that's sounding pretty awesome. So now here, what we wanna do is we wanna change the amount that that pitch is being applied to that frequency. So let's set this aux source over here to chaos oscillator two. And let's listen to the effect that that has. So let's turn this uh, octave of oscillator up because we want like a really sort of like high frequency sort of bird singing type of effect going on. So there's a lot of clicks happening with the modulation over here. And I believe it's due to the fact that this anchor is on. And I think what, what happens with anchor is that it attempts to reset the cycle every time the, the sort of BPM or the sort of division of BPM is changed within the LFO. And I think that's what's creating the click. So we can turn that off and see if that's any better. Cool, that's awesome. So now to create a sort of more of a natural sound, we want to play with these envelopes. We don't want it to be like a on off kind of effect. We want a bit of attack and maybe a bit of like release um, and you know, play with the curves as well because we are kind of going for more of a sort of natural type of sound. Cool, so that's sounding pretty awesome. Let's put some reverb on that and let's go with quite a big sounding reverb. And we can put some sort of dimension and hyper on there to maybe sort of give it more of a sort of like chorusy type of effect and maybe a chorus as well. So it sounds like there's more birds singing. That could be cool. So yeah, that's sounding pretty cool. And you know, the benefit of synthesizing something like this over just using a sort of sample or something like that 
yes, it is a little bit different, but you know, with electronic music, you don't want it to be exact unless you want that sort of like incredibly sort of like natural Foley effect. Um, you know, doing it this way, you have the ability to kind of like change the speed of the modulations and you can kind of dive in there and get a lot more technical with it. You can get more, a lot more creative with it. You can also change the key of the sound to fit whatever the key of the track that you're working with. I guess this is a little bit sort of, you know, random with the modulations and stuff. So there isn't a particular pitch that we're kind of going for. But that being said is you can alter it. You know, you can change the octaves and stuff like that. You don't really have that kind of flexibility using samples. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And I've got a couple of presets here for my Patreons. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this type of video and you want to see more of this type of thing, also let me know in the comments. I'm going to be uploading these presets to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link that's going to be somewhere on the screen right now. See you guys next time.